what the revenue models are for digital content delivery, uh, the digital rights management, and media convergence. We're going to go through online publishing and online entertainment. So, yeah, so we're going to go through all of these things today. I will bring us to, yeah, I'll check the chat. So, yeah, Starlink, yeah, that's a good point, uh, SciCat. Um, the yeah, Starlink would be good because, yeah, th that's a good competitor. Yeah, Starlink, that's a good point. Yeah, I think, um, and also, like, it hasn't gone public yet, but uh, Elon Musk, he is hinting that he will make Starlink public in the future. He, he um, There's been a lot of rumors that he's going to split it off from SpaceX and it'll go public, which uh, would be a good investing opportunity. So, like, just keep your ears open. If it does go public, if Starlink goes on the stock exchange, then... I'd recommend buying shares because that that would be a good way to make money. Yeah, uh, like if Starlink splits off from SpaceX, buy it. A good 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 point to cap. If anyone has any other ideas to solve the Rogers issue, let me know. I think also Interact. If you brought Interact, uh, Interact was, you know, serve like if the Canadian government ran interact or or the banks in canada that would that would probably be a better solution because that would prevent the monopoly issue so uh, i'll ask this question what was the last product or service that you purchased online and why did you per why did you choose to purchase it online rather than in store so i'll ask the class this feel free to unmute or or state in the chat what your answer is. So, stop the monopolies, we'll probably solve it. Right now we only have three main product providers in Canada, like you said, we need more competition. That's great. That's okay, that's excellent, that's excellent. Yeah, more competition, that's great. Um, LinkedIn Premium, that's great. And uh, course requirement. And yeah, we can only purchase online. That's that's good. We, we can't purchase in the store. Uh, what about anybody else? Like, what else have you purchased online? And why did you choose it to purchase online rather than the store? Well, that's good. Yeah, watch online um, because of online reviews. That's good. Yeah, the online reviews are good to check if the watches of high quality. The problem is with buying stuff in stores, you don't really get the review, the benefits of the reviews. So that's a good point. The reviews are really good to figure out if the product, you know, works or you know has problems. That's great, Saycat and Nichiketa. Feel free, anybody else who has uh, has input, feel free to state it. Yeah. Like as I go, um, we'll come back. Like if you have any more ideas, then I'll I'll discuss it. I just feel free to stay in the chat or on mute. So, COVID nineteen pandemic it increased e commerce retail spending because uh, people were afraid to go to the store, the stores, and then so there's a lot more goods available online. And then there's uh, they like the subscription-based revenue model. The reason why is because like uh, like certain companies they do like you pay a monthly subscription, and then they give you products on like let's say a monthly basis or a weekly basis, and then so like they like doing that because it's it's recurring revenue. Doing a monthly subscription service like uh, there's a few that do that. Um, you let's say you pay thirty bucks a month. And then you get, let's say, something every week. And then when you stop the subscription, you stop getting stuff every week. So they like doing that because you get constant revenue instead of just, um, you know, uh, instead of trying to get a sale after sale after sale. And then, yeah, so big data and analytics power increased use of predictive marketing. So that, that's good to do personalization. 
And then online retail sector. So it's important to integrate online and offline operations. So um, personal consumption of goods was about 20% of the total US GDP. So it's a pretty big market. If It's like a four and a half trillion dollar market to sell personal uh, goods to people. So that's a good market for people. And then the retail industry, there's uh, seven segments, uh, clothing, durable goods, et cetera. So for each, uses of internet may differ. And then there's uh, mail order, telephone order, and that's similar to the online retail sector. So there's sophisticated order entry, delivery, inventory control systems. So there's, uh, there's different types of parts of the U.S. retail industry that include general merchandise, online retail, gasoline, fuel, consumer dur durable, specialty stores, food and beverage, and MOTO. So, um, so specialty stores, like art, et cetera, you could sell it on Etsy. That would be a good, a good way to sell it. Uh, so like anything art related, you could sell on Etsy. A general merchandise is like Amazon. Um, you're kind of focusing on specialty merchandise and gas general, especially stores and general merchandise for and consumer durables um, for your project. So, uh, so here uh, the vision, the vision, reduced search, and so e-commerce is it's a good thing for consumers because they can. They can find lowest prices pretty quickly instead of going from store to store. They can just do a search and figure out when, where is the lowest price. And then uh, there's lower market entry costs because you don't need a store. You don't need a physical store. Lower operating costs because you don't need a physical store or staff. Higher efficiency because it's all online. Then traditional physical store merchants forced out of business because a lot of because of the pandemic, they've been forced into business. Uh, then and also it's high cost to have a physical store, so that's that's uh, that provides so having a internet store provides a lot less cost, uh, and then you don't have like yeah it's a lot more efficient. So eighty percent of internet users will buy online in twenty twenty, probably. A bit of that is because of the pandemic, but also a lot of it's because of the shift towards online. online. Uh, then uh, established online, re uh, established offline retailers like Staples and Pure Play online retailers, Amazon, they they mostly benefit from this, and that, that this is the, those are the companies that mostly benefit from what's happening here. And then some companies like Walmart, they're integrating. So they're they're making a web store with their physical store. So they they kind of they do online ordering, in store pickup, uh, delivery to houses. So uh, there's a lot of that. So uh, yeah, they kind of they 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 do physical and online selling. So. Computers and electronics sell the most. Apparel and accessories sell the second most. Furniture, home furnishing sell the third most. So um, in terms of, so like clothing sells the second most. So clothing would be a big, um, clothing is a big seller. So like you can, you can sell, you can make a clothing line. That's probably a good. So making your own T-shirts, uh, a clothing, etc. Making your own brand, that would be a good type of opportunity. So this is the growth in online retail uh, over the years. And then online firms, so uh, so 
You need to, so it's important. So economic viability is the ability of firms to operate, to survive as profitable business firms during, let's say, one to three years. And there's two business analysis approaches, including strategic analysis focused on the industry and firm itself, and then financial analysis for how the firm is, is performing. So those are, that's that. And then strategic analysis factors, key industry strategic factors are barriers to entry, power of suppliers, power of customers, existence of substitute products, industry value chain, nature of in, intra-industry competition, firm-specific factors, firm value chain, core competencies, synergies, technology, and social and legal challenges. So those are strategic analysis factors there. And then financial analysis factors, so like, it's important, so like, the, it's important to have positive net profit and positive cash flow. And then it's important to have like low liabilities, low current liabilities, low long-term debt. So you want to have like, you don't want to have a lot of debt really. And also you want to be making profit and cash flow. So Amazon uh, has lowest prices, best selection, most customer centric business model. It's through Amazon Web Services, which is they provide databases they provide like cloud storage um third party merchants retail um amazon has a lot of sales growth it's profitable and they want to maximize sales lower costs increase acquisitions increase mobile shopping and provide new products and services Then Amazon, they want to have online and offline general and catalog merchandisers. They want to have a lot of uh, online retailing technologies available. And um, they, yeah, so those are big parts of Amazon. And Amazon, uh, they are focused on sustainable profitability, increased profits from Amazon Web Services, Amazon Prime, and then future products and services. So like they make money off of selling goods, uh, getting commission on like uh, getting sales fees from their Amazon, like people that have stores on Amazon, Amazon gets a cut of what they, they sell. Um, Amazon Web Services, Amazon making money off of uh, providing cloud storage to companies. And then Amazon Prime, uh, they make money off of subscriptions to Amazon Prime and people buying videos on Amazon Prime. So, like, that's a big revenue source, advertising, and also they're expanding into a lot of other industries. So, Virtual Merchant, Amazon New Egg, Overstock, Wayfair, Blue Nile, Omni Channel Merchants, Bricks and Clicks. Including Walmart, Macy's, JC, Penny, Staples, Target, Catalog Merchants, L.L. Bean, Cabela's, all these ones. Manufacturer Direct, Apple, Dell, Sony. So these are all different business models. So which which one these days do you think works best out of Virtual Merchant, Omni Channel, Catalog Merchant, or Manufacturer Direct? Which one do you think works best? Manufactured direct. Uh, oh, Virtual merchant. Oh, like um, for manufacturer direct, um, why do you think it works best? Because um, um, sometimes you want to buy the devices and it's... Um, uh, sometimes you just maybe cost maybe maybe less cost if you don't buy it from a retailer maybe the cost can be reduced if you buy manufacturer direct take out the middleman i'm not sure if that's yeah. the case yeah i think like in some case yeah in some cases it would yeah that's that's true um it, apple's done very well with that they they're one of the biggest companies in the world and like they 
they sell it right to the consumer like that that's great um yeah so yeah the that can be a good method yeah that's virtual motion, virtual motion works the best because it follows the B two C. I think that's why it works the best. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Natch Kelly said that too. Uh, yeah, the yeah virtual merchant. Yeah, I'd say that um, these days uh, doing a virtual merchant or manufacturer direct is probably best because the bricks and clicks one. Bricks and clicks, I think omni channel would be both physical and online. So that that could that could work, but yeah, the virtual merchant and manufacturer direct seems to work better these days. Uh then catalog merchant uh is kind of doing catalogs that's that's very uh that's that's kind of going out of date. They don't there's not really any catalogs anymore. Um so they're kind of going towards more virtual now. So yeah, um, that's good. Natural cat, say cat. Uh, that's great. And then, so yeah, the virtual merchants account for forty-five percent. So that makes sense. Omni-channel merchants about thirty-one percent. So that's that's higher than I thought. A catalog merchants is eight percent. That makes sense. Not a lot of people have catalogs anymore. Then 16% are manufacturer direct. So Apple's got to take up a lot of that 16%. But yeah, the um, doing so omni channel is a combination of virtual and like physical stores, while virtual is just virtual. So like uh, virtual seems to be going, seems to be taking over. So that's that's where that's where commerce is mostly going these days. And then online retailing. So online online retail fastest growing channel in retail commerce. So you need to. So you need to develop an e-commerce presence to be successful these days. And then uh, retailers use a lot of big data analytics to determine uh, how to personalize experience to customers. So using so personalizing the experience for customers is a big thing now. So then the service sector is the biggest and most rapidly growing part of economies, like in in like this country, US and other areas of the world. And then so that includes doctors, lawyers, accountants, business consultants, and so on. So you so that's so creating like you can create a business providing a service if you want to. Like I recently become a became a mortgage agent. So you can do that as a service. Uh you can be an accountant as a service. You can do people's taxes as a service business. Like you don't need a CPA. You can be doing people's taxes without a CPA. Uh, and uh, just using online tax software. So I use Wealthsimple and it's very effective. So you can do that. You can, do, you can be a business consultant. You can go into businesses and show them how to improve. Doctors and lawyers need specialized training. You need to go to medical school and law school. But there's a lot of services you can provide. You can provide haircutting services. You can provide tutoring. I'll, uh, I'll ask the class, what types of services do you think you could provide as a business right now? Like, do you have any ideas of what types of services you could provide right now as a business? Because you could literally, you could create a business just providing a service. And also, I um, for the the final project, if you want to make a website for a service business. That's fine too. If you don't want to do an e-commerce website, you could do a service business. So I provide tutoring on the side. So that's the service that I provide. Uh, so um, that that would be what I provide. 
you could also be a coach. You could coach people in running, cycling, swimming, et cetera, other sports. You could be a sport coach. I know some people would do that full time. Consultation, yeah, you could you could be a business consultant. Yeah, you could do that. Make a website for that. Uh, there's a lot of service based businesses you can provide. Landscaping. There's a lot of them. Yeah, like if, if you think of any service you could provide, just look at your skills that you have right now, and if you could provide it as a business as your own business, that would be great. That could, that could be great. So then, yeah, service industries include finance. So you could be a financial advisor. There's a lot of, to be a financial advisor, you gotta be licensed by, um, and like you can get it through Sun Life Financial, Investors Group, a fair, uh, Freedom 55 Financial, all these companies. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Insurance is part of that too. So you can get certified in that. Um, so let me know if you're interested in finance or insurance because I can I can send you the right information about how to how to provide that service as a business. Real estate, you could become a mortgage agent or a real estate agent. Like I became a mortgage agent recently. Uh, let me know if you want more information about that. Uh, travel, you can be a travel agent. I know a travel agent. That would be a good service to provide. Yeah travel agent you could do that as your final project professional services legal accounting yeah accounting you could be, create your own accounting firm uh where you do taxes and financial statements for companies and bookkeeping legal you need for legal you need to be a, either a paralegal or law or a lawyer um, so you would have to go for additional schooling business services consulting advertising marketing and so on you could do that so you could create a business doing that if that was, if you want to do that as a final project, that's great. You can do that, um, and then you can provide that service to people across the community. Health services, like you have to be either a nurse or a doctor, so you you'd have to do additional schooling. Educational services, so like tutoring, uh, like that sort of thing, you could do right now. So like that, these are really good ideas. Like if you want to create a service business um, as part of your final project, just feel free to. These would be good ideas for that. Like I said, you don't have to do an e-commerce website if you don't want to. You could do a service website for your final project where you provide a service as a business. So e-commerce is transferring banking and financial services. So, so most online consumers use financial service sites because they have to buy online. And then fintech, startup companies seeking to disrupt this traditional financial services by using technology to unbundle services and deliver targeted solutions. So that that's something that happens. Uh, then established brand name national banks have taken substantial lead market share. So almost 65% of U.S. adults use online bank banking. So there's been a lot more use of online banking lately because of uh, it's convenient and you don't have to drive all the way to the bank. And then online travel market, people are buying airline tickets online, hotel reservations, car rentals, travel packages. So like they're doing that a lot online these days. So it's convenient and quick. And then here, so Online travel service revenues, they went down by like half in 2020 because of the pandemic. Really noticeable drop there. And then they rebounded, uh, like they went back up to where they were before in 2022. And they're predicted to go up a bit more next few years. So travel uh, come back up again. So that's, being a travel agent, that would be a good, that, that might be a good idea for a business if you want to be a travel agent. You could you could do that as a business. So there's a lot of competition in online providers for travel. Price competition is difficult. There's a lot of industry consolidation, so like companies merging together, becoming more monopolistic and less competitive. So that would be a big problem because they could just uh, put you out of business pretty quickly. 
uh, because of their um, because their companies are getting larger and becoming more hard to beat. And then you got to make sure that your website is is optimized for SEO, search engine optimization, uh, just to make sure that you beat other companies in search and have mo a mobile application, have social media content and reviews on your uh, on your on your website, like on your company. So make sure you do all that if you're doing a travel business. And then online career services are another industry. So like LinkedIn, Career Builder Monster, you could become you could you could create a business where you help people find jobs, right? So like you could, you could create a business where you find, help people find jobs. So you help them with classified and print ads, resumes, cover letters, career expos, recruitment, staffing, firms, internal referrals. So you could you could do a recruitment business if you want to. That would like that could be a good idea if you can find people jobs. And then, if you do this over the web, you can uh, use LinkedIn to recruit for people, um, to find jobs for people. So you could connect with people on LinkedIn and then just send, send them a note uh, on um, if they're looking for people to uh, to work for their company. So also, you can also you can uh, send cold emails to people, seeing if they would want to hire your client. So you could send uh, your client's resume to people on LinkedIn, or send emails to people that are looking for somebody to work for them, and you can send the the resume of your client. So. On-demand service companies is a good idea too. So <coughs> there, there are service companies. So like Airbnb, where you can uh, rent your house out for a night. Uh, Uber, where you can uh, where you can do ride sharing. There's uh, there's also uh, like you can rent out your car. Uh, there's there's a web a website where you rent out your car to other people and then they pay you. Also, there's like for the more for the richest people in the world, there's like there's this website where you can rent out your private jet uh, to other people. So like uh, so these sharing apps are good ideas. Like if you have an idea for a sharing app, like if uh, you could do that too, um, you can create a sharing app. Uh, that that would be. That could be a potential business. Also, uh, if you have cur if you have property right now, you could also like create a business where you rent it out to people. So, like that would be a good idea too. So, um, Mike. So we're gonna go through class discussion right now. So, uh, Instacart is a food on demand service. And they they provide food to people through the application. So so I'm going to ask uh, these questions here on the board. So if you can do some research on your on your computer about this or on your phone, um, like uh, and answer any of these questions, that'd be great. So chat put in the chat or on mute. So, like, what features or practices have made Instacart successful? What challenges do grocery meal delivery services face? And have you used any grocery meal delivery services? If so, what was your experience? So, um, so like, feel free to answer those questions uh, in the chat or on mute. But uh, for for me, like, I'll answer it as me. But feel free, like. Provide answers from yourselves too. So, for what challenges do grocery and meal delivery services face? I would say that um, 
they face the challenges of increasing gas prices. That, that's a problem because it increases the cost of their service. I think liability is another issue that they face because if, if they get into accidents and they're going to face legal costs. So those are issues. And then I've used grocery meal delivery services. They've been pretty good. They've been pretty quick. Uh, yeah, they, they've been pretty quick. And I find there's a lot of competition in the space. So th that's, all, that's a good thing for us. But what are your opinions on these questions? Like, what are your answers? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the easy sign up. That's that's good. Yeah, you're right. So an easy sign up is good because it provides like yeah, that's good. So they can just sign up pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, so that, that's good. Um, anyone can sign up. There's no barriers to entry. Uh, it's easy to enter. That's good. Yeah, that's great, Nashkata. Excellent. That's great. Great answer to that one. So then, yeah, great job, Nashkata. So then, um, the during the pandemic, there has been increased time in media, but advertising revenue has fall fell. Uh, then. The tech companies like Amazon and Netflix, they've created more content, Apple, uh, because people have just been watching more streaming because they've been at home. And then ebook sales go slows, probably because people are streaming more. They're watching Netflix and all that, all streaming type of things. Uh, then digital music sales, top physical sales, so people are buying online instead of going to the store. Cloud market, the cloud services pr provide a lot of ability to stream. And then uh, streaming is a lot uh, more popular than TV. So these are a lot of the trends that happened during the pandemic. So then in this case, so annual media consumption in the United States, it's mostly through like digital so that's streaming tv is about half of that and then radio is like uh radio is about say 20 like under 20 percent of digital and then newspapers are almost nothing magazines are almost nothing so it's it's mostly through streaming like the majority of media is through streaming so through youtube netflix Amazon, Apple, all those types of things. So, and TV will just keep going downhill and radio will keep going downhill a little. Um, it'll be all sucked up by digital. So then I'm gonna ask these questions. So what are some of the defining socioeconomic and behavioral patterns of millennials? And then in what ways does evidence 
contradict stereotypes about millennials' behavior patterns? Why are millennials so sought after by advertisers? And do you self-identify as a millennial? Why or why not? So those are my questions for the class. Uh, so feel free to unmute me or state in the chat where your answers are. So as uh, everybody's thinking, my my answers in this topic are that millennials are are of low income and they they like streaming. They mostly rent these days because of massive inequality. Then. Millennials are sought after by advertisers because we're streaming a lot and advertisers are pretty are advertising on streaming platforms. And then I would self identify as millennial because I'm part of the age group and also I'm I love streaming and I Yeah, so I love streaming, I love doing a lot of like, you know I like um I like like millennial music. I like playing a lot of millennial sports. Like that type of, you know, a lot of the millennial uh, traits would reflect me. So I would identify as that. Uh, yeah. So yeah. But if anyone else has any other ideas for this uh, for these questions, let me know. I'll just give you some more minutes to answer these like you don't have to answer all of them uh just answer like one or two or three So yeah, so I'll just move on to the next slide. So yeah, here's some of the due dates. Um, the e-commerce proposal will be due, I think, I'll check what day it is. So it'll be due at the end of the week. Yeah, so that's this part three of the project. And then uh, there's a few other questions. So. Uh, does time on the internet reduce time spent with other media? Uh, feel free to answer that. Um, so I would say yes. So like this is my answer, but feel free to jump in too. I would say yes because uh, they're replacing internet media with other media. So whatever you can do in streaming, like like whatever you could do on TV, newspapers, magazines, you can do on streaming basically. So everything streaming will replace everything long term so um you can advertise in streaming uh then yeah also streaming like uh the internet can replace books or ebooks so yeah physical products replaced by digital so that's so yeah everything can be replaced by streaming basically in terms of media uh so feel free to answer that question, does time on the internet reduce time spent with other media? If you have any other answers, or we'll want to add to my answer. And then, so online content delivery revenue models are subscription, a la carte, advertising 
supported free and freemium. Free content can drive users to paid content. So it's kind of like a preview and people who want to want more have to pay for it. So they do that a lot through Patreon. You provide free content and then if you want more, you subscribe on Patreon. So that's a good revenue model. So then uh, you can pay for high quality, unique content. And then, uh, so early years internet audience expected free content was willing to accept advertising. And then, so, so with, so iTunes, um, buying music, buying YouTube, movies on YouTube, that can be a way to get, um, get higher quality content. And then media convergence, so using hybrid devices. And then, so content convergence, industry convergence. So there's a lot of, so Netflix is producing a lot of shows these days and they're kind of, they're combining the production with the distribution. So they're doing a lot of that because a lot of the time they produce it uh, not, a lot of the time not produced under a network. Like a uh, show was usually produced by another company and then sold to network. But Netflix is like producing and distributing. So they kind of put it under one roof instead of, instead of buying it from another place. So uh, that's called vertical integration when they have everything under one roof instead of uh, buying it from another place. So, so here, media migration is when publishers, brochures on the web, and then media integration is when books are converted to PDF format for web dis display. The media transformation book is designed as an interactive ebook with both print and web components, media maturity. So that allows books to integrate web and text components on mobile devices and integrate functionality on mobile platforms. So media maturity, that's a kit, that's like a Kindle. Um, and then media transform, so a Kindle, it's like, that's when you can find a book online and it's very interactive. It's not just like just a PDF, it has um, a lot more features to it and you can, you can, uh, yeah, there's a lot more to it than just a PDF. And then, uh, so, U.S. online gaming audience, there's 155 million smartphone gamers, 96 million console gamers, 100 million desktop laptop gamer, gamers, and then 95 million tablet gamers. So 